hatchback. That's the third part of the story. And of course, the explanation why the leap is the great title of the story. Namely, the way that her mother saved her by climbing up a tree while the house is on fire, jumping, using her athletic ability to catch her heels on the gutter, swinging down into the window, and then helping her daughter to be able to jump into the rescue netting for the, uh, for the uh, firemen. The story then ending. I just want to point out, though, a couple of really interesting things. Go over to page 53 really quickly, and let's just pay attention to something that we'll pay attention to a number of times in our study. Good writers understand how to vary sentence length. Write this down at 2B. Good writers understand how to vary sentence length. We don't want all of our sentences to be the same length. Now, we could go back and analyze this in a number of places, but I just want to look at a couple of places really quickly. Take a look at the first paragraph there on page 53, and notice, as we are being told about what's about to happen to create a certain level of tension, she, mother, directed one of the men to lean the broken half of the extension ladder up against the trunk of the tree. Notice a, a, a fairly lengthy line. In surprise, he complied. A short line. She ascended. A short line. She vanished. A short line. What would you anticipate the next line would be in terms of sentence length? Look at it. Then she could be seen among the leafless branches of late November as she made her way up and along her stomach in, in, in inched the length of a bough that curved above the branch that brushed the roof. Notice that long one. So do you see this kind of the, a short one uh, married to a long one? Take a look at the very last paragraph that many argue is a brilliantly, beautifully written uh, paragraph. I know that she's right, that notion that mother had said to her earlier in her life, while I was falling with the death of my first husband. While I was falling, she said, I, I could think about and, and understand a lot. I know that she's right. I knew it even then. As you fall, there is time to think. Take about, think about the ways that this can be read both literally and, of course, symbolically or metaphorically, right? Curled as I was against her stomach. Again, notice the varying of sentence length. Notice the symbolism. Notice the power of the imagery that for nine months you were carried in your mother's womb, right, upside down, in the same way that a trapeze artist is hanging upside down. Only here, notice, you have the storyteller as a child in her mother's, next to her mother's stomach. I was not startled by the cries of the crowd of the looming faces. The wind roared and beat its hot breath at our back. The flames whistled a medium-sized uh, length line. I slowly wondered what would happen if we missed the circle or bounced out of it. Then I wrapped my hands around my mother's hands. I felt the brush of her lips and heard the beat of her heart in my ears, comma, loud as thunder, comma, long as the roll of drums, full stop. The brilliance of the varying of sentence length allows us to add a sense of tension. Let's jump to 2A really quickly, themes, messages. What is for you the central message, idea of a story like this? Some will argue that it has to do with a mother's love for daughter and a daughter's reciprocating love for her mother. Some will argue that this is really a story about learning how to take the famous leap of faith. That notion of there's a certain sense of you've got to believe in certain things and you have to go for those things. You have to take that famous jump, right? That we have heard about often in any number of different ways, but here in this story, it's manifested in the actual action of a mother who is willing to take that jump to save her daughter, right? Let's think again about to be. Obviously, you have... Clearly the notion of plot, the development of exposition, the climax. What for you is the climax of this story? What for you is the climax of the story? Many will argue that it's this moment in the flashback episode when the mother climbs up that tree and jumps from the branch of that tree onto the house to save her daughter. Of course, falling action as well. And notice that in this story, the, the falling action and the climax then come very, very closely together, which begs an interesting question then it to be, what is the central con conflict of this story for you? Character versus self, internal. Character versus uh, external characters, character versus character. Character versus nature, character versus an idea. What is it for you? Different students will have different understandings of that conflict. Of course, the story is really about the storyteller coming to terms with the fact that her aging mother is now losing her sight, right? And she's coming to terms with what that means. 
all of the years that are built around the life between a parent and a child. Let's jump to 3A really quickly. I'm going to mention a famous Danish philosopher named Soren Kierkegaard. Kierkegaard made the argument that life is about ultimately having to take the famous leap, the leap of faith. That is to say, you can't ever really know what it's like to go out for a sport team until you go out for the sport team. You have to overcome your fear and you have to be willing to take that leap. Jumping to 3B, two questions for you. What is for you the leap that you have already taken in your life? Something that you are afraid to try and yet you had the courage to get out there and try it. And how did that somehow affect or change the way that you thought about your life? Second question, what is your relationship with the people who you live with that constitute those adults in your life who are parents or significant others for you that are part of your growing up? What has been the moment in your life that you already have to recognize was a really pivotal moment for you in terms of your relationship with your parents? What has been the most important thing those people who have raised you have done for you to this point? And when you are older and when they are older, and it becomes time for you to take care of them. As I often like to remind my seniors, there will come that moment when you have to say to the person who raised you, I love you, but give me the keys. You're not driving anymore. I'm doing it for you. We live with people who, many of us, who say, man, I cannot even imagine what that will be like. I live with people who are fiercely independent, and they will not so easily go into that, that place, right? And yet... The roles will ultimately be reversed, right? It's the circularity of aging. What will that be like for you as you grow older? Well, the brilliant story, The Leap, I hope that you've been able to enjoy this story and maybe been challenged as well. Thank you.